had the Holy Spirit been prompting me to come back to this. So you need to, you need to go deal with that some more. Amen. Amen. Because we're talking about a, a traditional way of something being spoken. Amen. And God said, you gotta, you gotta come back to that. Amen. So I'm gonna come back to it. Amen. We're gonna go back to 14 of Matthew and starting at verse 22. Amen. I'm not trying to mess nobody's theology up tonight, amen, but I'm gonna just give you what God has given me. 22, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship, a ship, and to go before him unto the what? While he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the winds was contrary. And in the fourth watch, fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on, on the sea. How many of you have heard that story? About Jesus walking on water. Come on, somebody. Watch this. It says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, said, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway or immediately, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of what? It is who? Be what? And Peter answered, We go Peter. We're going we to build, we're going to mess with Peter tonight. Amen. <laughs> answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, what? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was what? And beginning to what? He cried out, saying, What? Lord, save me. Mm, my, my, my. And immediately, not, 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 not later, not, not, not a day later, immediately after Peter cried out, Lord, save me, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come unto the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, of, of a truth, thou art the Son of God. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and hearers and towards the gospel and know about you and say amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to take my time with this tonight, amen, because we want to look at Peter. Amen. We want to look at this, this incident or this, 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 this this thing that's going on right here, we want to look at this situation, amen, that took place carefully, amen, because, amen, how many of you have heard the saying, amen, and I'm, I'm going to deal with this, amen, how many of you heard, get out the boat? Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many of you have heard that preach front, backwards? Yeah. Get out the boat. Come on, somebody. And you get out the boat. Come on, somebody, amen. You just listen to what you're preaching, amen. I done did it to you. Ain't got to feel bad because I'm getting out the boat, man. Right. Huh? Amen. How many of you done did it, amen? Yeah. You done did it. I'm, I'm getting out the boat. I'm walking on water. I'm out the boat. Let's look at this carefully, though. Let's look at this closer. Go back to 22. And straightway Jesus constrained them. One of the definitions for constraint is necessitate. Necessitate means to, to make something necessary. 
something that is important. In other words, this was necessary. Y'all gonna get this thing tonight. He constrained them to get in the ship, but the ship was necessary. How many of you know the ship is necessary? He constrained them to get in the ship. He put them in a place that was necessary. Them in a place. He put them in a safe place. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. If Jesus put you there, come on, somebody, then the place he put you is safe. Yes. Are y'all with me? So he put them in a necessary place. Are y'all with me? And when God puts you somewhere, you need to stay where he puts you. Amen. Come on, somebody. If he puts you there, then the place he puts you is necessary. Are y'all with me? Amen. He put them into a ship, all the disciples. Ship means vessel. He put them in a vessel. The vessel was to hold them. Come on, somebody. How many of you know this house is a vessel that holds something very valuable? Come on, somebody. A vessel always contains something. Uh, when, when, when God called you a vessel, that means you contain something valuable. Are y'all with me? You're a vessel unto honor. Why are you a vessel unto honor? It's what you contain. You're nothing without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost resides in us. How many of your vessels are here? And if you have the Holy Spirit, come on, somebody. If you're a Christian, you have the Spirit of God in you, which makes you a, a, a valuable vessel. You have something that is precious on the inside. And the ship has something precious on the inside of it. And it was the apostles. And the Lord put them there. It says he put him in a place that was necessary to go to the other side. Y'all see that? So if God put you there, God will never put you somewhere without purpose. I hope y'all, I'm glad y'all quiet tonight because I want y'all to get this. God will never put you somewhere without purpose. He put him in the ship for a specific purpose. What was the purpose? To do what? To go to the other side. Come on, somebody. And you don't need to deviate or derail you or get off track from where God puts you. Too many times God puts us in a place where we're supposed to see, stay and we see the boisterous winds and get afraid. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the winds were contrary. Y'all see that? Now come with me. 25 says, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking what? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were what? Troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for what? So it says here that the winds uh, uh, were contrary and the ship was tossed with the waves and the winds were contrary. The ship was tossed with the waves and the wind were contrary, but God put them there. Jesus put them in the ship and they got out into the midst of the sea and they had adversity come against them. Are y'all with me? How many of you had some adversity come in your life? How many of you had some things beat up on your ship? Uh, come on, somebody. But I'm here to tell you that the ship is necessary. 
Because uh, Jesus put them in the ship. Are y'all with me? And things may come against you in your life. Don't mean that God didn't put you where you at right now. Are you with me? He didn't never tell you adversity wasn't coming. But I'm here to tell you Jesus is with you in the midst of the storm. He puts you in the ship. Stay in. I'm going to tell you baby right now. Don't get out. That boat. Stay in the boat. And so many people tell us to get out the boat. No, stay in the boat. If he puts you in the boat, you don't need to get out the boat. <laughs> You know, God told me, I want you to put a stamp on this thing tonight because so many people have preached it the other way. But the Lord said, I don't want you to preach it from tradition. I want you to preach it from my view. Are you with me? I want you to see it from my view. And a lot of times we look at the word, we're looking at it from the, different, from the wrong view. And God, so how is it that so many people talk about what people Peter did and not what I say? He's the word of God. Come on, son. He magnified his word above his name. God is not a man that he shall lie. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Why? Because he magnified his word above his name. His word is truth. But we look at what Peter did and just overlook what Jesus said. Jesus put them in a safe place. I want you to, I want you to, I, I want you to grab hold of this. He put them in a safe. That ship was a safe place. Jesus put them there. And the only way you're gonna get to the other side if you stay in the safe place. Amen. Because he put them there. And not only did he put them there. The ship was necessary. I can also say the ship was grace. Because grace is necessary. Are y'all with me? So here they are in grace. Here they are with favor on them. Here they are in the... Can I, can I also say the ship is the will of God? Huh? If God puts you there... Are you in his will? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thank you. And if you're in his will, man, let me just see. What happened to Jonah? Jonah fled from the presence of God. The presence of God represents his face. I'm getting ahead of myself. The, 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 head, the presence of God represents the face of God. See my face. And Jonah fled from God. The scripture says it like this. He fled from the presence of God. Gee, Peter wasn't in the presence of God. He needed the hand of God. Why? Because Jesus stretched forth his hand to deliver. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you. So, is it safe to say that this boat is the will? Oh, come on, so you can say, man. <laughs> Is it safe to say that the Lord is the will? Amen. Is it safe to say that Jesus put him there? Amen. And if Jesus put him in the boat, then it's safe to say that they were in the will of God in the boat. Yes. yes. Amen. <laughs> Watch this. Go with me to John uh, Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Let's start at verse, let's look at it from this <coughs> 45. Are you there? And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the what? Other side. Until Bethsaida. While he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into the mountain, to a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, 
the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. Y'all see that? And when he saw them toiling, and another definition for the word toiling is struggling, or, or vexed, or torment, or tossed. He saw them struggling. Just because God put you somewhere don't mean you not go struggle. Amen. <laughs> That's good stuff, eh? So it's okay to struggle. Tell you it's okay. It's okay. You can struggle. Come on, somebody. He put them in the ship and they struggle. You're going to go through some struggles. But stay in the boat. Come on, stay in the boat, Pam. Stay in the boat. Watch this. Says that when he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind, he saw them. Now over here, it, it, it doesn't mention in Matthew that he saw them. Over here it said he saw them toiling. Right, so Jesus sees the struggle. <laughs> Even though you're in a safe place, he puts you there. And a lot of times when we struggle, we think we out the will of God. No, you're not out of the will of God. He said you're going to the other side, but getting to the other side don't come without struggle. You're still in a safe place. The enemy wants you to get out the boat. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, come on, somebody. Yeah, I'm going to show y'all. The enemy wants you to get out the boat. Come on, somebody. So you can start sinking. Get out the will. Say it again. Get out the will. Get out the will. Get out the boat. And we've been here. Get out the boat and walk. No, get out the will and sink. Because yeah. you ain't going to sink in the same place. That's right. The boat didn't sink. Because Jesus put them there. I hope y'all get this thing. I hope y'all get this thing. My mama. Yes, sir. So when he saw them toiling, in the ruin, for the wind was contrary about the fourth watch of the night. He cometh unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed them by. See, if you're struggling, the next thing you need to do is cry out. Yes. Come on, somebody. Because sometimes your struggle can cause fear. Come on, come on. Be back to back. He would have passed them by Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to write this thing. Matthew chapter 14. Are you there? You make it Matthew? Back and forth. We're going to go back and forth. Go to 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. He saw them, right? Did it say it anymore? Yes. He saw them and he started walking towards them. And he would have passed them had not they cried out. A lot of times we struggle <laughs> and we allow our struggle to keep us from crying out to God. Oh, yeah. Mm. You see a lot of people struggle with habits, struggle with something. Does it mean you out of the way? Come on, somebody. Stay in the struggle. Cry out and God will deliver you. Come on, somebody. Amen. The, 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 watch this. And here's the thing. The apostles in the boat didn't need to be delivered, they just needed peace in the storm. <sighs> Keep going. I don't qualify what I'm saying. They didn't say, Lord, save me. They didn't cry out because of the storm. They cried out by what they saw. They saw something that seemed to be a spirit. We walk by faith and not by what? Sight. Sight. So here they are walking by what they see. So they said, wait a minute. What we see don't look right. They started struggling, but the spirit 
say they didn't cry out because of the storm. They cried out by what they saw yeah. caused fear. Oh. Yeah. Watch this. It says, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, said, it is a spirit. And they cried out for what? Fear. But straightway or immediately, Jesus spoke, spake, said. Oh, come on, somebody. Can I say that one more time? Jesus said. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Even if, the, if, if God tell you you heal, <coughs> even you heal, what's, you, what's gonna come out your mouth next? And you gonna do what? You gonna praise God? If God tell you you heal, what are you gonna take? Or are you going to say, prove it? <laughs> we always talk, you know, we, 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 we don't preach this so many times. We get on the disciples that stayed in the boat. Get no way, man's up in heaven that man out to <laughs> We always get on the disciples because it's messing up your theology right now. Your theology, you think it's hard right now. Hold on, hold on. I done had this game preach too many. Oh, wait a minute now. Hold on, Bishop. No, 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 no. Uh, and we, we always talk about the apostles that stayed in the boat. And we glorify Peter for getting out. Mm. My, my, my. Let's, I'm gonna come back. I'm, I'm gonna deal with this. I'm gonna come back. Watch this. But straightway Jesus said, "Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid." Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? He's talking to all of them in the boat. Be not afraid. It's I. Be of good cheer or be of good courage. What they should have done, what did they do? John, God said, you overlooked that John which leaped on my breast. John that wrote Revelations, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, the book of John, he was in the boat too. You, 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 you forget who was in the boat when I said, be not afraid, be of good cheer in his eye. Don't brothers immediately see, receive strength to go somebody. Yes. Yes. They immediately, immediately from the word being spoken. The Bible says Sarah received strength to conceive. How does she receive strength to conceive? By the word that was spoken. So when he said, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Them brothers received that day. Wow, they were in a safe place. Sometimes all you need when you're struggling is a word. Amen. Huh? It's going to be okay. Keep moving forward. Okay. Because the other side was forward. Come on, somebody. It's okay. It's me. Sometimes you're in some mess. You're struggling. You don't think the Lord is there. And the Lord said, no, it's me. I know you're struggling, but it's me. I'm, I'm, I'm right here with you. It's me. You don't have to fear this. It's me. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus knew before them brothers got in the ship, what they was about to deal with. Yeah. But time won't permit me to do it. But before they got in their ship, all they saw Jesus was a master and Lord. They did not believe he was the Son of God. Because if you go back to Matthew chapter 8, the scripture says he told them, let us go to the other side. He was in the back of the boat sleep. The scripture says that the wind was boisterous and began to beat upon the ship. 
And Jesus, they said, Lord, we perish. But Jesus said the same thing to them. He said, he said, look here. He said, let us go to the other side. And then they turn around and see that the winds were bolsters and beating upon the ship. They said, Lord, we perish. No, he didn't say that. He said, we're going to the other side. They said, Lord, we perish. Jesus said, he woke up. He said, oh, ye of little faith. How is it that you're so fearful? He rebuked the winds and they said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds obey him. So all they saw him was, was just a man. Because they said, what manner of man is this? Y'all with me? <laughs> so we get over here and Jesus said, no, this is necessary because it's time for us to go to another level. Oh, All you see me as is master and Lord. Now you need to see me in another lighting. This ship is necessary. This struggle is necessary because you're about to see me in another way. Oh, yeah. y'all oh, to another level. Y'all ain't, ain't trying to hear what I'm saying. He put you in a safe place, but your struggle, your toiling is to take you to another level. Because before that, all they saw was just a man. But something happened when he walked on water. Let's keep going. Is this all right? Watch this. 14. Seven. But straightway Jesus spake and said, spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Now here we go. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, I'm gonna deal with this, right? I'm gonna deal with it. <laughs> Peter answered him and said, What? Lord, if it be thou, command me. To come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. He didn't say, Come on the water. He just said, Come. Peter said, Bid me to come on the water. Jesus just said, Come. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are here to say. And when Peter was come down out the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water. <laughs> watch this, watch this. If it be thou, bid. The word bid means what? Command me to come. Come to Luke. Come to Luke. Let's deal with this right here. Luke 22. Let's, let's look at Peter. He said, Lord, bid me to come. See, we got to be able to recognize the enemy. Are you here? Are you with me? Watch this. Luke 22, are you there? 31. And the Lord said unto, Lord said, Simon, Simon, which is Peter, behold, Satan have desired that, y'all see that word, desired? That ED on the end means past tense. He didn't say Satan desires. He said Satan have desired mm. to have you. Oh man, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to help y'all now. Wow. He said Satan have desired Eva, past tense, to have you. He been trying to get you all this time. Mm. He ain't, he's not trying to get you right now, Peter. He's desired to have you. Watch this, watch this. In other words, he's, he has been asking for you. Uh -huh. He's been demanding you. He has asked to give, he's asked me to give you up. Okay. Mm. He's been bugging me about you. He desired from the day I call you, he's been desiring you. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yes, sir. 
this, 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 oh, this good stuff ain't it else. Yes. It jumped out to me because this is key at that moment. It's, it's key. Now watch this. He said to sift you like wheat. Or, or in other words, by the inward agitation mm -hmm. to try one's faith to, to the verge of overthrow. He wants to overthrow your faith. He's desired you this whole time. Wow. Is this all right? Yes. Well, I'm, getting, I'm just getting started. Watch this now. Says, and he said unto him, Lord, watch what Peter said. I am ready to go with thee, both in prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou even knowest me. Because Satan hath desired to have you. What did Jesus say he prayed for? Can we, can we look at Peter? Satan desired, Satan never stopped messing with Peter. Come with me back to Matthew. Tell your neighbor, don't, don't, don't. get yeah. out of wow. that, that boat. boat. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in there. Stay in there, man. Don't get out that boat, man. Don't get out the boat. Watch this now. Watch this now. 28. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou. What did he say? I want y'all to focus on Lord. Say Lord. Lord. Come with me to Matthew 16. I'm just about to watch this now. He said, Lord, if it's you, be it me. Y'all there? Y'all there? Amen. I'm going to get up and I'm going to read all this. <laughs> Watch this. When 13, Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Cicero, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, the others say Jeremiah, and one of the or one of the prophets. He said unto him, He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The Son of the Living God. Y'all see this? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in what? Heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my what? Church. And the gates of hell shall what? Not prevail. And I, and I will give you, give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Man, look at the, the Lord revealed Mr. Peter. Y'all see this? He said, flesh and blood have not revealed to you, Peter, that I'm the son of God, my father, which is in heaven. Let me keep going. Then charge he his disciples they, that they should tell what? No man that he was, the, was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Forth, he be began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and be raised again. The what? Third day. Watch this. Then Peter, Satan desires to what? Satan have what? Desired to have you. See, Satan was after Peter the whole time. He was messing with Peter's head the whole time. Yeah. Watch this. He said, what did he say? He said, Lord, if it you bid me what? To come on the water. Peter took him and began to what? Rebuke him, saying, be, be it far from thee, what? Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get behind me, who? Satan. Satan. And yet Peter called him Lord. Oh, <laughs> Peter said, Lord, and 
And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So Satan moved him to call him Lord. Mm. He used the term Lord, so he, he's the tempter, he's the, the crafty, he's clever. So here he is trying to play on Peter, oh, just use the word Lord and he might think it's you. Lord, be it far from thee, Lord, that this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said, Get behind me, Satan, for thou art offensive to me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You are in agreement with men. And Peter said, Lord, and he said, Get behind me. Come back to me. I, I, I see you still. <laughs> what did he say? If it be what? Thou Lord. He said, Lord in Matthew, in, in 16, it got rebuked. Come with me to Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. So you got to see the pattern of the enemy here. Watch this. Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Let's start at 17, 3 and 17. Look what, the, look what the Lord said. Look what God said about Jesus. Lo, the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved, what? Son, in whom I am, what? Now jump to four. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be, what? Tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of Man, come man! What did Peter say? If thou, if it you, Lord, come man! The same pattern! You see the same pattern? If you be the Son of God, here he is attacking Jesus' identity. Come on, oh, come on, somebody. Two times he said, if thou be the Son of God, command thee that these stones be made bread. He's attacking his deity. Oh, God. He's, watch this, watch this. He said, but if he answered, but he answered and said, it is written. What did he say? It is written. What did he speak? The word of God, like he spoke to them in the ship. He said, it is I, be not afraid. Y'all ain't getting this thing. Watch this. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And then the devil taketh him up, watch this, into the holy city. And set of him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, the same thing Peter said, If it be you, Lord. Watch this. He said, I tell you, if, it, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down for this ring. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said, it is written. Again, thou shalt not what? Tempt the Lord. If he's tempting Jesus, why you don't think he's messing with Peter? Watch this. Jesus said unto him, it's written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil taketh him up. Now watch this into exceeding high mountain to show him all the kingdoms of the what? World and the glory of what? Them. And he said unto him, unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou fall down and worship me. He attacked him, watch this He tempted him the first two times. He said, if thou be the son of God, if thou be, he dealt with the deity. Now he's dealing with his humanity. I can't tempt him his, I can't test him that way. Let me try to test his humanity. Because he said, let me show y'all the kings of the world now. See if, the, see if you want that. If you fall down and worship me. And he said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and only him. Do y'all see the pattern? 
And then as I begin to think about Peter, sister, mother English. As I begin to think about Peter, it was Peter that went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And, 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 and when Jesus transfigured himself, and it was Peter that stood out and said, uh, let us make three tabernacles, uh, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. And God spoke from heaven and rebuked Peter. He rebuked him. He said, he said, wait a minute now, Peter, hold on. Here, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. I think it was the same Peter in the book of Acts that took it upon himself to try to fulfill scripture and appoint an apostle. But come on, somebody. When Jesus specifically told them to tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power on high, Jesus told them to wait for the promise of the Father. And here go Peter taking it upon himself. Uh, the Holy Ghost had not fallen. He told them to wait. Didn't Jesus say wait? He told him to wait and Peter take it upon himself uh, again. Come on somebody and appoint. He said let us fulfill scripture and he appoint an apostle. I think it's the same Peter that said no to the Lord when he dropped unclean animals out the sky in a vision and told Peter Peter kill and eat. It's the same Peter that told the Lord no Lord I'm not. Y'all better yeah. help me. I see a when Peter denying the Lord three times, I see a pattern with Peter. It's the same Peter that ate with the Gentiles in the book of Galatians. Come on, somebody. The same Peter ate with the Gentiles in the book of Galatians. But when James came, he withdrew himself and got rebuked by Paul for his hypocrisy. Yes. Wow. So how can, so it's the same Peter, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. When we see that Jesus saw them and Jesus was going to them. Yeah. And even when Peter tried to distract Jesus from them, because they are the assembly Jesus was coming to them Peter got self-centered and selfish and wasn't worried about them he was worried about himself and self is of the devil y'all come on somebody the devil is selfish Jesus is selfless y'all come on it's not about you Peter I'm coming to Not the ones in the boat that struggled. 
and stayed in the boat. See, it's folks that struggle and get out of the boat is when they sink. Because Peter struggled with them. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. He struggled with them. But he decided to get out the boat. They stayed in the boat. Don't get out the boat. He, he leaves the assembly. Let me tell you something. Don't forsake the assembly of yourself. He leaves the assembly. He gets out the boat and began to walk on water. And when he saw the wind boisterous, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. When he was already saved in the boat. Watch this. If Peter was in the will of God, how is it that Jesus took him back to them? Huh? He, see, he stepped out of grace. It was mercy that pulled him up. Okay. See, when you frustrate the grace and when you get out from grace, you are the mercy now. He stepped out the boat and began to sink, yet mercy pulled him up. Jesus still had compassion on him. Save me! And let me take you back to grace. Let me take you back to grace. Let me take you back to where I... What happened to Jonah? Jonah fled from the presence of God, went down to Nineveh, went in a ship, and then got thrown over the ship in the mouth of a well and took him right back to where he ran from. <laughs> Sometimes we call ourselves a whole lot of problems when we should have just did it right the first time. Huh? And what I love about God, he's so merciful. He said, Jonah said, you know what? And what I love about that story, Jonah, man, they were having trouble. The people in the ship said, man, there's something going on. Jonah said, it's me, it's me. So, I'm out of the will of God. It's me. Throw me overboard and y'all won't have no problems. But God said, I'm going to throw him overboard and have shit. I got a way of waiting for him. <laughs> so but sometimes we try to get him. Throw me over. Y'all going to be all right. Throw him out of the way I'll just wait for him. <laughs> Took him right back, spit him out to where he ran from. Okay, Lord. <laughs> Peter did the same thing. Got out of the ship. Met the Lord. See, God will meet you out his way. You can't run from God. You can make your bed in hell, he's there. Where can you go from his spirit? He gets out the boat and Jesus saved him. And look what Jesus did. He takes him right back to the ship. The people in the boat didn't need to be delivered. They didn't need to be saved. They was already Peter needed to be delivered. Watch this. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O oh, ye, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore or why, if you look that up, why didst thou waver doubt? O oh, ye of little faith, lacking confidence, why did you doubt. What did he doubt? <laughs> what he said. What did he say? It is I. Be not afraid. And we focus on Peter seeing the boisterous winds. Peter was going to sink anyway. 
And Jesus knew it when he got out that boat. <laughs> because when you get out the boat, the winds are too much for you. The same boisterous winds, think about it, that was beating on their ship when he was in the boat. Jesus said, Peter, good cheer in his eye. They weren't afraid of the boisterous but when Peter got out of the boat is when he saw the boisterous winds. Think about it. They said, Lord, the winds were contrary, toiling. They were struck. They were toiling in the ship, but they were afraid of what they saw. They wasn't they wouldn't move by the toilet and the winds beating on the ship. It was until he got out of the ship that he saw that. Yeah. And began to sink. See, when you get out of the ship, that's when you see trouble. You stay in the ship, you're not moved by the trouble. Because he speaks to your trouble. He tells you, it's me in the midst of your trouble. You gonna be all right. all right. Watch this, watch this. Amen, thank you. Amen, watch this. I'm gonna let you go home right now. 32. And when they, him and Peter, were coming to the ship, the wind did what? The, the wind did what? So it still was going down even around them. <laughs> but they just believed what he said when he said, it is I. <laughs> they didn't want to get out of the ship. And people say, oh, they were afraid to get out of the ship. It's not I'm afraid to get out of the ship. No, he put me in the ship. <laughs> say it again. They were stupid. He put me in there. <laughs> so how am I foolish or how am I afraid because I'm staying where he put me? Yes. See, that's why we got to be careful how we study scripture. And one thing the Lord showed me was that, son, stop seeing it from man's view and start looking at it from my view. Wow. Start seeing it. Stop trying to see it traditional. Uh, in tradition. Look at it with the spirit. What's more greater, my word or what Peter did? So why y'all magnify what Peter did? What did I say to him? Peter proved me by telling me to come. And I could not deny myself because I already said it was me. He's faithful. He can't deny himself. So he said, if it's you, the, the devil thought he had him set up. Because he, see, in Matthew, when the devil tempted him, he never said he was the son of God. But he told the apostles, it's me. And oh, it's him. Oh, well, oh, let me test this thing right there. If it's me, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Come. He can't deny himself now. Come. It, I didn't say this week. Come, Peter. But I'm going to take you right up. Mercy going to pull you up. And I'm going to take you right, right, right back where you should have stayed. Yes. But you got self centered. Selfish. I can imagine the brothers looking at me. Here you go again. <laughs> <laughs> Always trying to impress the Lord. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna get that. They were like, uh, well, we'll see if it's the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Go. <laughs> he just, well, watch this. <laughs> think about it. I mean, really think about it. If we in the boat, go ahead, Peter. He said it was him. You don't believe that? You can't stand on that? No, no, nah, that ain't enough for me. Prove it, yeah. Prove it's you. The Lord doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. Say that again. The Lord does not have to prove himself to anyone. It's, it's the enemy that's proved, proven. Yeah. The enemy does that. Prove it, Lord. Prove it. If it's you, prove it. 
But what did the centurion say? Speak the word only. That's what moves God. When you trust his word, he marvels at that. When you can stand on his word. And when they stood in their ship, he saw them toiling. And when Jesus came and said, it is I, I'm coming to you. They were in the way. Took Peter right back. Jesus is the son. Couldn't Jesus say, good job, Peter. Hey, the rest of y'all, come on too. <laughs> Don't that seem logical? If Peter walking on water, and Jesus said, the rest of y'all, come too. If Peter was in the wheel, shouldn't Jesus have said that? But he, take, he took them back, took Peter back to the boat. When he got in the boat, and they were, watch this, and they, then they, that were in the what? Came and what? Saying what? Of truth thou art. He wasn't a man no more than them. That ship was necessary. That struggle was necessary to take them to the next level. I'm not just your teacher. I'm not just Lord. I am the Son of God. And you need to see and know that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And that was, that was all about. Because it wasn't until then that they confessed him as the Son of God. And they worshipped Him. When did all that happen? In the ship. In the safe place. You can worship in the safe place. Come on, somebody. In the safe place. Come on, give God a hand. And when you get out the boat, listen, you know, I've gotten out the boat. Because I've confessed. Thank God for snatching me up. Come on, somebody. That's their mercy. So y'all about to go and mess up somebody's theology. I know y'all. I know y'all. I just know you But it's okay. Because we need to know the truth. Hey, hey. Peter got out the boat. Amen. Thank God he still got saved. Thank God he got delivered. But you ain't got to go through all that. Just stay in the boat. You ain't got to say, Lord, prove it. Prove it. Prove it. I don't believe what you say. But if he said it, it's all good. It's all good. Come on, give God praise.